on this edition of ASFN, I'm basically going to show you another trace that we use for diamonds, duckbills, braggies, uh, small hammers, um, pretty much any of the flatfish family that you get. In the previous episodes, you would have seen an FMJ, which is a full metal jacket trace, which was entirely made of our 7x7 90 pound. Then later on, I did a nylon um, FMJ, if you want to call it, uh, for our flatfish, clean, calm conditions. Works very, very well. Now I'm going to do one which is a combo. Basically, it's nylon plus wi um, wire. Uh, so basically, we have wire in the front, 90 pound, 7x7, American fishing wire, which is that over there. And then I'm going to be having nylon but it's not just nylon this is tennis racket string and the reason we use it is very very stretchy first of all and it's a very high abrasion resistance so if you're fishing in and around rocks this stuff is absolutely fantastic i'm going to be using nano tuna circle hooks to make this trace as well as our kingfisher leader line this is 31 kilo for our hook snoot our number three NT swivel, which will run up and down the actual tennis racket string. Number one power swivels, which, as you know, one of the strongest swivels that you can get. I've got some UV knot sense, obviously the UV light, my lighter, and two little clear beads just to run as stoppers up and down the line, so they don't damage the actual knot. Um, pair of side cutters and a pair of pliers. So what we do is our 7x7, 90 pound, and we're going to take about 35 to 40 centimeters of 90 pound. I'm just going to cut it over there. Okay. Nano tuna circle, and this trace is more for clean water. I will do another one for dirtier water or nighttime fishing. First of all, what we do is we snell the nano tuna circle. And how we go about doing it is we take the tag end of the actual 90 pound. And remember, this stuff is very soft and supple. And we just pinch it in our fingers. So I'm just going to turn it around so you can see what I've done. I've actually pinched the nylon coated wire there. And then I'm just going to work my way back, going around six or seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And then through the top down. So it's as simple as that. Very easy not to do. And all I'm going to do now is just melt the plastic ever so slightly so it does not come undone. My lighter. And not a very um, hot heat. The flame mustn't be too big. And we just lightly melt it until I can see that it's actually starting to melt. And then what we do is we just pull it. As soon as you can see a little bit of smoke, you know that the temperature is right on the plastic. Wet your fingers. Just make sure it's not moving anywhere, which it's not. That little tag end over there, we're going to cut off. Okay. So <clears throat> at the end of the day that's most probably about 30, 35 centimeters. Now to join it to our tennis racket string we're going to use a figure of 8 knot. Okay. There's my tennis racket string and my nylon coated wire. All I'm going to do is two loops around once, twice, as simple as that. Go from the back through open it up to form our figure of eight. There's the figure of eight forming. A bit of lubrication on it. And we're now going to just pull it ever so lightly tight. There we go. It's as simple as that. Not going to do anything else. You see how it springs apart? Just going to be very careful of that when it comes to tying with this 90 pound. Next, I'm going to take the tennis racket string and wrap it around my finger three times, forming that figure of eight again. And there we go, one, two, three times. Take the line through the back of the actual knot, 
open it up to form a figure of eight. There's the figure of eight for me. Just a bit of lubrication. I'm just going to push these two closer together. Okay. I'm now going to pull the tennis racket string or nylon, whichever one you prefer to use, tight to form that tight figure of eight. And while I'm doing it, I just move it ever so slightly down and down. There we go. Okay, so there you can see I've pulled that tennis racket tight. I'm now going to pull the wire tight. There it is there. Slide the two together. And pull as hard as I can just to tighten everything up. Cut off the tag ends. And there we go. So basically the wire is pulled tight. The nylon's pulled tight. And that's it there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give a little bit more movement here. And instead of using a crimp like I did on my, uh, my normal FMJ, I'm going to attach a piece of nylon here to form a stopper knot. Again, all it is is a simple figure of eight. So this is 31 kilo kingfish and island and I'm just going to do a stopper knot. It's three times around the finger, exactly like I did before. Open it up, form a figure of eight, push the knot together and whatever length I want it to be, about 400 in length. So basically from there to there I'm going to make it about 400, 450, I'm not going to make it longer than that. And I'm going to pull it tight now. Easiest way is just to do it with your teeth. Cut the knot off as close as you can so you don't have too much of a, a burr sticking out or tagging sticking out. Okay, so there's my stopper knot. I'm going to tie another one. Just to give it that extra bit of strength. And we're going to do it again. One, two, three. Okay, so there it is there. I'm just going to move it up to where the original knot was, which is over there, and I'm going to pull it tight again. Cut that off. As close and as cleanly as possible. So basically that's the stopper knot, which is two figure of eights. And now what I do is I take a bit of UV knot sense. This is the loons version of it. And we're just gonna lightly glue that together forms a little bit of a poxy just on it we use it a lot in fly fishing so basically that's it there take a UV light or you can walk outside if you want the normal sunlight will actually sort it out and we just bake it basically that's all we're doing there we go And it takes about 30 seconds to cure and that's basically it done you can see it's cured nicely now you got all the movement it's nice and supple it's also got a lot of strength and abrasion resistance now we take out our first little bead find the hole there's our first little bead going on now <coughs> We take one of our NT swivels, and again this is a number 3 NT swivel. It's one of the biggest ones that you get. And like I say before, it's flanged on both sides so it doesn't damage your nylon or your wire. It rotates 360 degrees. Stick that one on, and let it run down. Our second little clear bead is now going on. And that's just there to protect the knot if you want 
um, basically when the NT comes back it doesn't damage your your knot that you've made so that's all the swivels are there for uh, the little um, beads are there for they just run up and down and just protect the actual knot part of your trace so that's basically all it's doing running up and down power swivel number one and that's basically what we use power swivel number ones they're nice big whoever grabs onto your trace can grab it it's not going to run through your fingers being a small one and hurt you and i'll show you what happens okay to join that again it's just a simple figure of eight put around one two three times around over and through <coughs> and there's your figure of eight formed bit of lubrication move the knot up slide it up there and <clears throat> I always find the easiest way to do it is to take your circle hook and stick your circle hook in there pull tight and there we go there's your figure of eight formed nicely cut it off nice and close and there is your swivel to figure of eight. Okay, so there's your entire trace. Now what I'm going to do is just attach the <coughs> nylon to your sinker part, which again, simple figure of eight to do it. So again, to do that, what we do is we go around the finger three times one two three times like that through the back and out again there's the figure of eight a bit of lubrication and slide it down to where the actual knot is pull tight cut the tag end off nice and clear cleanly and depending on how you actually gonna throw it whether you're gonna just put the mackerel through the head over there and uh, cut it off and throw it or if you're gonna use a dangle depends on what length you are actually gonna make it for your sinker but that there guys is the clean water trace that I use quite frequently if I'm fishing around rocky areas and that um, I've got the wire for protection for any tooth critters gray sharks um, bronze whalers and again if you're fishing for flatfish duck balls eagle rays and that you've got the confidence that if you do go over the reef that you've got some sort of abrasion resistant line that will actually be soft and supple first of all for the movement that you require for your baits if you're floating it up and still gives you the strength um, if you're going through the rocks and mussels that's it Simple as that. If a grey shark, a raggy, anything that, like that comes along, obviously small raggies. And generally this is for targeting smaller toothed critters. Your grey sharks, your hammers, little bronze whalers if you're in the cape. But that's basically the tra trace that I'd use fishing in that area. Again, very simple. There it is there. Total length of it is about 1.6 meters in length but that's the whole trace ready to fish in clean water don't get me wrong clean water i'll do the exact same trace now for dirty water or nighttime fishing <laughs>